rapper to come out of New Orleans? The hardest the to hardest. me ever? Yeah, but uh, it's your opinion. I mean, I got to say, I got to go with Wayne because where Wayne took it at, my favorite is Soldier Slim and then Wayne or whatever. For why it's just like where he took it at, the flows, like Wayne is on a whole nother level. Yeah, we on boss talk one on one. Yeah, we gonna talk. So let's let's talk about. Uh, let me put you on spot for a minute. Who the hardest? Who the hardest uh, rapper to come out of New Orleans? The hardest the to hardest. me ever. Yeah, but it's uh, your opinion. I mean, I gotta say, I gotta go with Wayne because where Wayne took it at. My favorite is Soldier Slim, and then Wayne or whatever. For why it's just like where he took it at the flows. Like Wayne is on a whole nother level. So you gotta like every head must bow, every tongue must confess. Like Wayne. To the world, I feel like people. I love Jay Z. Jay Z and Tupac, my favorite two rappers. But I gotta say, Wayne took that shit to a whole nother level. He mastered his style. So for him being from New Orleans, and I feel like one day they're gonna end the airport or something after him big or whatever. But I gotta say, Wayne. And I know the city loves Soldier Slim. So the king of New Orleans, forever Soldier Slim, because he's so 504. But if I had to say the greatest to ever do it, not just in New Orleans, Louisiana, and just all time in hip hop. Man, I'm going to say Wayne because the way he evolved and took the mixtapes and the flows and the influence he had and everything, I'm going to give it to Weezy F. Baby, the Wayne Carter. That's hard, man. You know, I man, when you think about that whole era, I always said Wayne, he he hard when it comes to the music, but Baby baby and Slim hard when it comes to the business. Definitely, definitely. And I just felt like people be just, you know, kind of, I would say Lil Wayne, but that would have never been no Lil Wayne without the right infrastructure. You right, know what I mean? Right. Of course. The right foundation. And I think Birdman, I think a lot of time don't get the credit he deserved as far as because of the business behind the whole brand. Mm -hmm. he, I'm talking about from early on where people say he missing this nigga out of money doing this. But it it take a hard it take a different type of dude to mm -hmm. be able to even stand in that gap when right. it comes down to leadership. But this is the thing about that too. Everybody was talking about the shady business of the music executives. Yeah. A lot of those guys been having shady stuff when they, they don't talk about Morris Levy, all the shit he did or whatever. Uh, 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 Leonard Chess, like it was white dudes that was doing shit, but they always talk about the black music executives. But like I said, Birdman and, and Slim was learning that shit on the fly. Nobody didn't teach them. They didn't go to school for this shit. They just was learning from the streets, trial and error. But to say that they did this shit with no college education, them dudes went a long way. And of course, great coaching is just like Phil Jackson or Costa Mato with Tyson. Wayne them had the talent, but you still needed those great executives to be able to give them that direction and understanding. So I feel like that's why they're so important. That's why Birdman went on live and he was saying, man, I'm the best to ever do this shit. Like, who did it better than us? Like, name somebody. He said, yeah, I studied Suge Knight, J. Prince, and um, Puffy, and people like Easy e but I learned what they did and I did it better. And nobody didn't have a longer run. Wow. And that's true. Like, from from even before Cash Money had a deal seven years before that, when they was doing it with Pimp Daddy and UNLV and slew of other artists to the high boys ever to when Drew and them left and Wayne and the big time had to hold it down to Nikki and Drake to right now. So, of course, you got to give it to them. And and I heard Joe Button them saying, no, we're going to give it to Rockefeller. We're going to give it to Def Jam. First of all, Def Jam was more of a, they operated more like a major because they had Murder Inc. under them. They had uh, Rough Riders, Rockefeller, and a whole lot of the labels. There was Cash Money was more like a subsidiary label under a major. So they used to for them to do what they did, Rockefeller, and I love Rockefeller, but they didn't have a longer run in them. Cash Money is a whole different monster. And they don't want to give them that credit because they're from the South. So they're gonna always be like, I'm country niggas, we can't get in the way smarter. Y'all don't wanna give us deals, y'all don't wanna give us labels, we made our own. I just I thank God for you. Breaking <laughs> that down like that. Like, we know what y'all trying to do. Right. And we ain't going for it. Right. And to hear you say it, it just compliments the way I talk. Right. You saying exact, don't it? It's the mm. same exact conversation. Now, look, I'm going to say this, too, <laughs> to even Tyler Perry, because he's from here or whatever. He's from Uptown with Birdman and from, he went to Cohen, the same uh, school that, uh, like, people like Lil Yai went to from UNIV. Anyway... When you think about Spike Lee, Spike Lee kind of looked down on Tyler Perry. Oh, he making these coon type plays and these country people making them look stupid and all that, making black people look bad. This dude, Tyler Perry, telling his story from the South, from the way he sees it. That's right. You telling your stories with Crooklyn and everything from your story growing from being from Brooklyn. Now, you went to Morehouse. Tyler didn't graduate, but he still learned all this stuff and did it better. You just got a $100 million house built in Douglasville, Georgia. Ooh. He came a long way. He got his own studio. So all this stuff that they thought these dudes was dumb and we don't know nothing, but look what Tyler Perry did. So every time they think that 
these down south boys, country and stupid and bunkins, we keep showing that we not. But maybe they're gonna catch on to it and Tyler Perry understand that most of the black people live in the South. And most of their ancestors came from and went up there or whatever. That's right. We still had to deal with it. That's right. And we had to get it out the mud and we had to make a way, you know, we turned dirt into diamonds. Man, that's hard. Diamonds man. and dirt. No, no I, I love it, man. You know, and I agree. So, yeah, Spike Lee had his run and that was mm -hmm. cool. But he's supposed to commend that younger brother that's coming behind him mm -hmm. and doing what he's doing anyway. Because that's what we do a lot of times. We, we, we forget about the, the, the fact that God paves the way with that new generation. Right. He did it with Joshua and Moses. Mm -hmm. I'm a believer. So, right. at the end of the day, I see how he Moses had his time. Then Joshua came and, you know, and, that, and so on and so on. But mm -hmm. the next generation was always stronger. Right. The younger generation carries the new vision. Right, right. And we got to respect and it. I, and I think about, I think, I, I don't know, I, I might be saying her name wrong, Zola Hurston or something like that. She was a poet back in the day, and, and Langston Hughes was a poet, but he was more like in Harlem and stuff. But they seen the world different. They used to kind of get into it a lot, but she was telling her story from a Southern woman, and he was telling the story of living more in New York. Same way with W.B. Du Bois. He doing the NAACP in Harlem, and Bucket T. Washington down here in Alabama. So the way we deal with the, the white people and the way we had to deal with it in that time, it was different. So he was like, you bowing down to the white man, but he like, I gotta, we looking at it different because we're in two different parts of the world. Oh. So that's how it be with us in the South, even with the music. The way they see it and the way we see it is different. It don't mean it's wrong, it's just we from two different parts of the world and we just do it different. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.